You're watching Telecom TV's exclusive video coverage of the NGMN industry event here in Frankfurt. And joining me now is Paul Palakos, who is a Cisco fellow with mobile networks at Cisco Systems. Paul, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. What is Cisco's role in the 5G process? Well, I guess there are two pieces to it. Um, one is, of course, what we're doing internally with respect to research and development on, on the technologies that we think will be important for 5G. Uh, and then the second piece is our participation in the uh, standards development organizations and the industry fora that are moving the community and the business community and the technical community in the direction of really defining concretely what 5G will be, um, what, what it, it's going to attempt to change or the transitions that we expect to happen in the business community um, and how we'll support those from a technical perspective. So we're participating both on, you know, internally, of course, we have our, our research efforts, and then externally working with the rest of the community with the service providers, whether it be, uh, for instance, in 3GPP, NGMN, um, ATIS, and 4G Americas, uh, with the ITU. There are lots of examples. There's a lot of players in this. There's a lot of coordination that needs to go on to make sure that we're coming to a consistent um, definition of, of, of what 5G needs to do, and then the timing for 5G, and, uh, and then how we're going to build 5G. There are many versions of 5G out there, what 5G could be, what 5G should be. What's Cisco's view? We believe, certainly, that at the foundation of it, it's all economically driven, right? So we have to serve our end customers. And our end customers um, traditionally have been consumers, um, people who carry smartphones and iPads and things like that. But in the future, the... Um, the people, the end people that we serve, or the end things that we serve, are going to be very, very diverse. Um, and um, we certainly will have the community that we serve today, consumers, but in addition to that, we'll have enterprises that we're supporting, who are supporting the Internet of Things, mobility, vehicular uh, applications, this host of, of applications that we talk about. The thing that marks 5G as being different than 4G and 3G and all the Gs that have preceded it is the diversity of use cases and the diversity of devices that we're going to support. Whereas in the past, it's been relatively well-defined. Um, we're attempting to, to define the use cases right now. Um, we'll, we'll get it partly right. And what we won't identify are the use cases we didn't see. Um, but we have to be able to serve those. Tell me more about the information-centric networking approach you're taking to 5G. The ICN is um, an effort that's come out of the research community broadly, globally, both in Europe and out of the future internet architecture work that was supported by NSF in the United States. So there's a, a, a good deal of academic research that's been done in this area. But it's an attempt to, to look beyond where we are today to how we might design or redesign the internet based on the diversity of uses that we put the network to compared to what we anticipate or what we expected if we go back to when we invented the internet back in the 1970s or so. Um, and so ICN is a generalization of, of our routing process where in traditional IP routing, we route based on a label that identifies a location. And in ICN, we route based on a generalization of what that label is. It's just a name. And that name can represent anything, but in particular, it can represent a piece of information or a chunk of information. And it's built in a way that we can route very much the same way that we route on IP addresses. Only now, the information can reside anywhere in the network. The packet is no longer tied to a particular address. And so um, a user, there's a specific model that's built around it called a risk request response model, uh, where a user requests a named data object, and that named data object is returned to the user. And it's actually returned over the same route in the network. Now, the advantage of this is, first of all, that it, the network design implicitly supports mobility. Whereas today, we have to build mobility as an overlay on top of, of, of our IP networks. 
Secondly, the content data chunk that's returned is signed by the publisher. So that means that when I receive it, I know that this is the data that I asked for and that nobody has changed it or modified it in transit. It also means that that data can be stored anywhere, even in a, in a cache in the network that's not really trusted. And so that means that this model now incorporates mobility, it incorporates security, and it incorporates storage as fundamental players or fundamental actors in the, the networking design. And how does this tie in with low latency, which seems to be one of the main differences between LTE Advance and 5G? Yeah, the latency question in 5G, it really depends on what the use case that you're talking about. I mean, everybody likes latency to be low, uh, but it really depends on, on the use case we're talking about. So there are some cases where we talk about tactile inter internet and uh, one millisecond or sub one millisecond latencies. When we look at, at transport latencies over a network, just because of the way we do routing, they tend to get into that range of one to, depending on what the congestion state is of the network and everything. So what we're going to have to start doing is pushing the information and the decision making, the things that people are looking for when they're looking to make these low latency transfers out close to the edge. So these are all very, very natural things to happen in an NDN-like network or an ICN-like network where information naturally gets stored or pushed out to the edge as it becomes more and more popular. So that's one case. Um, so certainly the idea of having distributed storage in the network is, is moving in a direction that will feed the trend towards trying to support more and more low latency. And how will 5G affect society as a whole? I think this really comes down to we're building a framework. All right, and um, you know, our feeling is there are some things that we have to dramatically change in the way we support mobility. Um, and if we can build a 5G framework that will support many, many different kinds of devices, um, allow more innovation to occur at different stages. So we talk about loosely coupling or decoupling the access technology from the core network. Uh, will enable us to um, more easily integrate new access technologies as use cases would demand them. If you then reflect this back onto uh, how this affects our society, it just means we can do more things with the tools that we've been given. Uh, that the barriers for new companies to come in and innovate and add those to the collection of things that we do will become easier in the very, very same way that the internet has grown and things have changed in unforeseeable ways years ago. We just knew we were doing the right thing. Today we're trying to bring this to mobility. And in fact, looking to the future, our belief is that mobility is just a natural function that anything should be able to do. We should, it shouldn't be the domain of a specific kind of a device. This is a mobile device, or oh, that device isn't mobile. Anything should be able to be handled as a mobile device by the, by the network. Paul, thanks very much indeed. You're welcome.